Grow My Cleaning Company podcast helps owners of cleaning companies just like you to grow your company and yourself so you can make more money and finally get the time and money freedom that probably got you into this business. Discover how to automate and create systems that allow you to grow like crazy without losing control. If you dig the show and want to show some love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. It really helps. Enjoy the show. What's up, Cleaning Nation? Lindsay here again. And today we have part two of a two-part series. Um, So if you missed part one last episode, go back and check it out. It's Jared and Jackson from our GMCC team, our marketing gurus, and they are explaining to us why CRMs, or customer relationship management uh, software, is so important to your cleaning company. And it's something that's often overlooked and not spent a lot of time on by our clients. So we thought we'd do a deep dive into it at our event. And this is just a taste of um, what we go over. And hopefully it helps some of you out there in Cleaning Nation. And um, if this sparks any kind of interest in you and you want to learn more about it, definitely go to growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash talk. And you can book a call with one of our coaches, maybe even Mike himself, and um, we can get you started on this journey. Thanks a lot and enjoy. So that's kind of like the importance of it, right? And, and now I guess what we can walk through is, okay, Jackson, you, you drilled in my head how important this is. I get it. How do I actually implement it? What do I do, right? And so to caveat this, this is all done through the lens of Pipeline Pro. So this is Pipeline Pro. If you have Pipeline Pro, you've probably seen this before. If you use another CRM, all CRMs operate on the same basic principle of a lead comes in and then you have opportunities, right? And so the lead is just the person. So Chris is a lead, Jason's a lead, Bob's a lead, Mike's a lead, right? Mike's an unqualified lead, but he's still a lead. <laughs> he's, yeah. he's on his phone, he's not listening. He's a, he's a, he's a bad, bad core value. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, the lead, lead is just a person, right? The opportunity, on the other hand, is actually like the fruit. That's the deal. That's the service that they're going to want as a person. So if it's commercial, the lead might be the decision maker, but the opportunity is their business. So you get to clean the business. Uh, for residential, usually the opportunity is just still the person, but you have to think of it as it's the person's house, right? It's, it's them. There's a totally different thing. Um, Every lead is an opportunity, but not every opportunity is a lead. Best way to put it. Let me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do some data collecting really quick here. So raise your hand if you feel like your CRM process is a 10 out of 10. Oh, 6 out of 10. Nice. 4 out of 10. Okay? Zero. Oh, perfect, perfect, perfect. I would, I, w- I would like to know, if we get past a box around, I would like to know what makes them think it's a zero, just like one or two okay. people. Okay, let's do this really quick, yeah. Uh, to, before I hand this box off, the mindset and the fear that we sometimes have with our CRM is that we don't want to see the data. Yeah. And so there's some, you know, if I remember this when, with our sales team, um, I'm always looking at what they're doing, their feedback, what is it that they're saying and all this kind of stuff, and I'll notice when they're enrolling and life's good, like, they're in that thing every day. Oh boy, this was uh, talking about how great they are. And when it's like kind of quiet, it's like, bro, where's your data? Because no one wants to write like, oh, I botched that call or whatever it may be, but we're really excited to go the other way. So sometimes there's this fear of our data that keeps us from our CRM. And anyway, that was, that's my own experience. Okay, someone who feels like they have l- their, their CRMs is zero. Let's do one commercial, one residential. Because I saw Nick, he's, he's commercial. And okay. then Christina is residential. You have nothing going. So that's why it's a zero. That's a good zero right there. That's a perfect zero, just nothing. Bullseye. Bullseye. Okay, uh, you want a residential? Christina. All right, I'll hand it. I know these things are dangerous to hawk. <laughs> so I have Pipeline Pro. I have a landing page through Pipeline Pro but I have all of my leads and opportunities written down on paper because I cannot um, in my brain understand how to input the data. So I don't use it. Well, I'm so glad you're here today. <laughs> yeah. This is, yeah. is going to be very helpful. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, I think that's a legit real thing. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. 
Um, well, cool. OK, so we have people that just don't have it at all. And then we have people that have it but aren't using it, um, which is fine. That happens. Um, also, Mike, I'd probably rate our, our CRM at like a four, to be honest. Just saying. Yeah, I'm so, well, I work in it, so. Yeah, I'm getting another text right now. Yeah, so listen to us, because we're going to tell you how to have a 10 out of 10 CRM. <laughs> um, OK, so again, this is through the lens of Pipeline Pro, but at the same time, uh, pretty much every CRM operates on the same level in terms of uh, leads versus opportunities. And then again, we have a question right here real quick. Oh, I have to do this. So what is, what is CRM the, like ClickFunnels? No. Jared, you want to answer? Yeah, ClickFunnels to a degree. There's um, a lot of people who have ClickFunnels, they integrate a CRM into it. Oh. And so there's ways to have integration involved in that. So like, you know, I actually don't have ClickFunnels right now, but okay. um, my Facebook ads and all the data that it Okay. Collects would mm -hmm. not be considered a CRM. So that's your your that's like front end data. Uh -huh. So uh, yeah, essentially a CRM is going to encompass all of it. Is what Correct. you're going to be able to really more. see. Like this is what we're going to see with Pipeline Pro. Like we're going to see it whether someone filled a contact form out on this page right. or this page. Okay. And then when that person came over into our CRM. What happened? Did they book a call? Did they take an email before they did that? Did they become a customer? If they're not a customer anymore, why are they over here? Did they receive a follow-up sequence to see if they're going to join us? That's how a CRM works. It's yeah. like this, almost like a little assistant that's working for you to that not only help people be where you want them to be, but also provide you the data mm -hmm. of where they are. OK, so it's like a really, really broad, detailed view of the entire system. Customer relationship. together. Mm -hmm. relationship. Yep. Thank you. Good question. Um, cool. So Hold now on, we'll I got one more. Um, so I rate my CRM uh, like maybe out of four, maybe a three or two. If you say you're out of four, <laughs> maybe I'm at a zero. Um, I use Pipeline Pro. Like I have my landing pages on there. Um, and then I bring everyone from my hiring funnel through there. Cool. If I have a form or something like that to create uh, you know, for client attraction, um, I'll create one there. But currently, it's going through Jobber, right? So I'm kind of using like two CRMs. Yep. Um, I get the basic premise of the CRM, like you know this and that. But <clears throat> what I want to know is like, how do I unlock the full potential and be like a wizard at it and do this and that and like the tracking here and the e e like you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I'm not expecting it to be overnight. But at the same time, um, I'm, I'm sort of like confused when I look at, my, at Pipeline Pro or at any CRM. I'm just like, OK, well, I know how to do this. The rest of this, I'm just like, you know, blind. Yeah. I have no idea what's going on. Yeah. Can I give a general comment before you give a specific answer? Mm -hmm. So I was having a conversation, I think. Thank um, you. I was having a conversation with Jason earlier about um, the CFO people. And when I had my car dealership, my construction company, it was a lot of cash flows in and out. We were very balance sheet heavy. And it made sense to employ a fractional or full time CFO depending on our revenue. The reason we don't have it here is our cash flows are pretty positive. It, it, it's a very simple business. The way that we coach you guys to do it, it's the same thing. It's super simple. The reason we don't coach you to get a CFO is your business isn't set up for it. So the one. <laughs> distinction I want to make between our, and I try to always share what we're doing as it relates to your, what you're doing, and many of them are similar, right? I obviously don't have the systems that I teach you guys, that systems, all the culture, and 80% of it lines up perfectly. But sometimes there are things that don't line up, and I want to be really clear so you're making a fair comparison. So when Jackson says ours is at a four, all we do is information marketing. We only have it like, we, our system is completely marketing based, it's global, it's we are information marketers. We don't have a physical product. So it's a ridiculous comparison. It would be like, oh, so my other business was more important or better or whatever because you had a CFO and all this accounting stuff. No, it, it needed that. I'd lo this is so much better. Not having it is better. We use Entreport. It's, I don't know, 500 bucks a month, 1,000 bucks a month. It's a lot. It's a, it's a lot. huge pain in the ass. I would not get Entreport. 
<laughs> yeah, and you're like, why don't you recommend it? Because it would be the worst thing ever. The same thing, the, so the accounting software used for our car dealership, I was so glad we could just go back to QuickBooks. But if I used it in the car dealership and somehow I was coaching, you're like, why don't you teach me how to use dealer track? I'm like, because it's insane. God forbid you ever have to use that. So the good news is the marketing concepts that we teach you of how to speak to your client and have some tracking is important. But I don't want you to track like, well, Mike's got 66,000 contacts and I've only got 132. It doesn't matter. Um, the example I give all the time is that you can put up a YouTube video of a, that goes viral of a kitten or doing something cute or something and it gets a million views in a day. Our YouTube channel lifetime with like 800 videos has gotten a million views. That kitten made the owner of that content, you guys tell him 82 bucks in traffic? I don't know what a million views are. Uh, yeah, depends on what, his, what he was trying to Probably, accomplish, but. Yeah. If it's just traffic it, views, it's less yeah, than $1,000. He's trying to make ad dollars from his viral. Right, and what, what does he, he have with that audience? Something. He has a million people that think kittens are cute. Like, I don't know what you would sell them or how, like, there's really nothing you do other than go, YouTube, I have a million views, can I please have a nickel? And they'll throw a couple pennies at you. My million views has been worth millions of dollars. I don't say that to brag, I say that so you go, well shit, if 66,000 could be worth millions, maybe 6,600 or even 660 could be worth tens or hundreds of thousands. So I just wanna encourage you guys, please don't, there's a lot of places to compare your business with ours and I'll tell you, this is what it should look like, here's how it should look, and it, those are great comparisons. This is not one of them. So please, for this only, we'll always share what we do, but I, and that fine line of I don't ever wanna be cagey and be like, that's private, whatever, we're pretty open about everything. But I don't want you to get confused like, oh, if I don't have Entreport and you know, R4, like you said, well, if you're at a four, I'm at a two. For, for what we do and the complexity that's required, we're at a four. Yep. For you guys, it would be a 12. It's, it's way more than you would ever need. So I'm gonna let, obviously, Jared answer, but I just want everyone, everyone cool with that perspective of, we want the right tool for the right job, yeah. right? Okay, yeah, I, I perfect. just wanna get that clear. Yeah, the, yeah, I'm a, I would battle Jackson for the reason of that I know what he's talking about, so I'm in our entrepreneur, but our CRM goes all the way through where you are right now, right? So customer retention is part of a CRM, and like we have literally, a, the, we call them the three amigas, that are over that section of our business, and so this is going to kind of wrap into what you're saying. You're like, hey, I have this, and then I have this, and I have this, and like it's common that that takes place, that there's this to this to this to this, because there's different journeys that people take. And so for you are a very different customer than the person that just saw my Facebook ad today, right? And so we have different systems that take care of you that then take care of that Facebook person. And so I think the entrepreneur side of it, I agree. But when it comes to like, when we get internal, like it's pretty dead on, you know, because we have literally three people full time who take care of all of that. But I want you to, to answer your question specifically, specifically, I want you to listen to this. And then as it goes through, any questions that you have, then let's connect and go over that. Because I think there's gonna be a lot of what you're asking is gonna be solved through this. Yeah, because um, basically what we're gonna go through now is, is like the technical stuff and what can be done and what it should look, look like and what, what yours can potentially look like, whether it be in Pipeline Pro or Zoho or Salesforce or HubSpot or any, anything else that you wanna use. Um, because essentially, when you have a CRM that's working properly, that you update, that your salespeople update, that you can have automated to update, it's gonna look something like this. You're gonna be able to log in on any given day of the month, and you'll be able to see, you know, exactly what my opportunities look like, what my value of my pipeline looks like, how many leads, how many people, potential customers are at varying steps of my pipeline. And you can do all this without having to dig through anything, without having to go through sheets, without having to go through funnels. This is gonna be your first thing you're able to check in the morning, you're able to check at the end of the day. And the reason I love this so much, and I tell you guys this, is you know, a lot of times we set goals for every month and you come up, we're, we're in the last week of June here and I know some of you guys are, oh, I got like three more, I got four more, I gotta get in. And what are you doing to, to correct that, right? Do you have to bring in new leads? Do you have to maybe follow up with people you sent bids out to? Do you have to follow up with calls? Um, do you have to get signed up bids back? This gives you the opportunity to see exactly where I can get those leads. So like, for example, you log in, oh, I need five more. Well, you look in here, well, I have 10 bids out that don't have signatures, or I have eight people I haven't followed up with in a while. These are all potential people. You can get 18 out of this. Blow your five out of the water. 
I mean, hell, you can get five probably pretty easy out of 18, I'm just saying. So, yeah, and real quick, as, as, for me, I just looked at this and I see, okay, we've got 12 leads sitting in here, zero scheduled calls. Like, whoops, yeah. there's a problem. Yeah. Yeah, 12 people came in, but we didn't get them into a call. And so when that is presented, hey, Jared, or hey, Jackson, I've had 12 leads come in so far from my Google ad and none of them have booked a call with us yet. It's like, oh, we're not even gonna look at your Google account. Yeah. Let's look at this funnel. Let's look at this tweak. Let's, and that's when we start to just put on our human brains and we're like, oh, this is confusing or the messaging seems off or they don't know why they need to book a call when they just gave you their information and became a lead. Like they're expecting, you, you know, like that's where that conversation comes in. You can see why that becomes valuable at that moment. And that can't be seen if you just come in and say, I, I don't know, I'm not getting anything. And we go, okay, well, how many leads do you get? Well, I got 12. You got 12, and then it's like we're dissecting, dissecting, and then finally we're like, oh, this is the problem. Where you can do this, you can see this wasn't rocket science what I just did. This is a weird number, right? And it can be solved. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jared, Jared hit it right spot on, and I did that on purpose. Because <laughs> this, is, this is fake, by the way. This is all sample data, so don't think um, that these are real people or anything. I mean, maybe they are, but I don't, I don't think so. Um, but you can get a pretty accurate idea of, of exactly where your issues are. Um, and then that's a lot easier for us to teach you on how to fix that or some of you guys know how to fix it on your own because you're all smart people um, but as opposed to like Jared said you know the issue's just there yeah one it, more I'm gonna add one more thing onto this so if I was to ask you how many leads does it take you to get a sale do most of you feel like you have a general idea of what that would look like yes. how many do you need me to zoom it up Three to four. So if you get three to four people to call you, you can get one. And is that one as a show, or is that if I can, get, if I can walk through four, I get one? Like, what, how specific is this? What, I guess what would be, in your mind, that four number? For what? Four They fill out a form, they give you a call, you showed up to their building. So someone gives you their information. You need four people to get a sale. Do you know how much it costs you to get someone to go through your funnel? Uh, everything included is between 100 and 200. So uh, per person? Yes. So you get a, 150 to get someone to give you the information. You need four of those people to then close. And then if we keep going down this. You can see how this is going to work. Well, how much is that person going to be worth it to you? How much can I put into advertising? And then let's just say you do the numbers and you go, whoa, turns out if I do four and it costs me this much and I'm only getting this much from bids, I think it's working, but it's not working. Turns out I need to hone this in more, make that cost cheaper. And that's where we get into the free throw range, where we start to say, well, where's my effort gonna be? Oh, I'm paying too much for my leads. Well, where is it? What's the problem here? And then we become our free throw champ of this area. And that's where we move the peanut. That's where we put our effort. That's what it is. And so we have a goal in mind. It's not, I want more sales. It's, I want to get someone into my funnel for $50 cheaper, $25 cheaper. And so that's when you start playing with headlines. You start trying out different areas. You know, right now I'm on Google. Let me try to go with Google Performance Max. Or let me try to go over here on display ads. Let me try this YouTube thing really quick. And see if you can bring that down. And now you're moving the peanut. You're getting closer to trying to accomplish that goal. And that, all that information is coming from by you tracking what you're doing. And then it just becomes a formula at that point. It becomes just like if-then scenarios. Well, here we are, the end of the podcast, and you made it. Great job. Uh, I've got a little bonus for you before for sticking through with me, but like I mentioned before, if you got value out of this podcast and you want to show a little love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes, Spotify, wherever the heck you're listening to this thing. Share it with a friend. Share the love. And as a special thank you for those of you that stuck with me to the end, how about I give you my personal phone number so we can text? It's a great way for me to get to know you, your business, your goals personally. So shoot me a text now, 602-932-6431. 602-932-6431. I am the only one who responds to these texts and I will personally respond to everyone I possibly can as long as uh, this number is manned. I uh, don't know how long we're going to keep this at the end of the podcast, so grab it now. 602-932-6431. Give me a text. Say hey. Can't wait to meet you.